Hi, welcome back to my channel. Thank you for watching and for subscribing. And if you're just visiting, please consider subscribing. So a few months ago, I did a video about uh, best or my favorite fragrances for early fall. And now that we're in the beginning stages of winter, well, possibly late stages of fall, depending on when this video comes out, uh, I wanted to share with you my favorite fragrances for late fall and early winter. Of course, uh, you know, if you watched me for a while, you know that I love those heavy type of fragrances and really big part of my collection consists of these types of fragrances. So there's so many that I could have chosen here, but first I tried to narrow it down to 10 to keep it at a reasonable number. And um, some of the fragrances that I've chosen, you know, I've spoken about recently, some I haven't spoken about that much. So I wanted to include some variety in here. Let's start with a beast of a fragrance from the house of Atelier des Ors. This is Lune Feline. In my mind, this fragrance is really only appropriate for really cold weather. It is so strong and powerful that I don't think I can pull it off during any other time of the year. So this is cardamom and vanilla, but Cardamom is so, so strong in here. It is beastly type of cardamom. Um, in addition to that, there is a, there are woody notes, there's cinnamon, there's pear balsam. So it definitely has a very heavy sort of woody elements. Uh, it is even a little bit resinous, I would say. And then there is a vanilla with cardamom, especially in the opening cardamom is almost overpowering. Like at first, when I first got this fragrance, it was overpowering for me. It gave off that, you know, burnt rubber vibe. But this is the type of fragrance that you really need to experiment with and try to wear because uh, the few times that I tried it originally, I really lost that burnt rubber feel and I just get this amazing, strong, powerful blast of cardamom mixed with vanilla. And then when it dries down, you know, vanilla comes to the forefront kind of together with woody notes, I would say. Cardamom is always there, but it's definitely uh, not as strong as in the opening. It mellows out, it mixes together with vanilla and other things and it is just gorgeous. Beastly. Be careful uh, on the trigger with this one. You don't need uh, too much. It lasts, it projects, it is definitely beastly. And I think this is a beautiful, beautiful scent for truly cold weather. Next, I want to share a fragrance with you that I have never talked about on my channel. That's because it is new to me. In fact, I haven't even shared it in a haul. It will be part of the upcoming haul. And it's a very affordable fragrance. I don't really know what, um, made me curious about it or what made me pay attention to this fragrance. Haven't really heard anyone talk about it, but I saw it come up on Fragrance Buy. Sounded interesting. I looked up the notes on Fragrantica. The bottle looked really, really elegant. And I thought, okay, I really want to try it. So what am I talking about? This is from Ted Lapidus and it is Oud Blanc. So here's the bottle. I really don't know anything about Ted Lapidus. I haven't tried anything from this house except for this one, but I think the bottle is just so beautiful and so elegant. I was really, really uh, drawn in by the bottle design. And like I said, the fragrance is very, very inexpensive. I can't remember exactly, but it was in the area of 30, I think to 35 Canadian dollars. So I'm sure even less in US dollars. Now, as you can guess by the title, this is an oud fragrance. The only thing is that the cap is very tight. I mean, I really have to pull it to get it off. So this has saffron, it has peach, it has oud, of course, rose, jasmine, vanilla, patchouli, and musk. And it's a really, really nice oud scent. Now, oud is definitely present here. You can smell it. It's not too much. It's nice kind of oud, but you can tell that oud is here. 
it's not the type of fragrance that's all about rose and oud it's really more like a bouquet of flowers like i am getting rose but i'm also getting jasmine and i even feel like there could be more florals in here like none of the florals are super super defined i mean i can tell there is rose in here but it's not all about just rose there are other florals in here um there's also a little bit of saffron in here, just a little bit. It's not my favorite note, but I'm glad it's it's very uh, mild in here. Um, peach, I'm not sure if I get peach. There might be a slight hint of um, something fruity, but it's, it's very, very light again. Um, it's just a hint of fruitiness rather than anything really strong and powerful. So mostly it's a sweet oud with vanilla and some florals. That's kind of what it is. Uh, is it something unique or out of this world? No. Um, you know, uh, there, are many, there are many fragrances with this scent profile, but if you're looking for something um, new and something um, affordable in that kind of a wood and floral and vanilla combination, this is a great one uh, to try. It's really, really nice. Like I said, I really, really love the bottle. So again, if you're looking for something like this, give it a try. And I think, you know, wood in general is, is better suited for uh, colder weather in most cases, and unless you have kind of a, a very fruity or very light oud, but most oud fragrances are more suitable for colder weather, and this is a choice that I wanted to share with you. Next fragrance that I want to share with you is from the house of Tom Ford, and it is Noir de Noir. Now, I don't have a full bottle, I just have a sample, but this is definitely one of the fragrances from the House of Tom Ford that I want to get a full bottle of. It is stunning. It is dark. It is mysterious. It is deep. It is a little bit smoky. It is a little bit earthy and everything together just works very seductive, sexy type of scent. I mean, there is, of course, there is rose. Um, there is saffron in here as well. Not really getting it. There is a truffle. There is There are other floral notes. Patchouli, of course. There is a little bit of oud and oak moss and vanilla. Uh, you know, in this case, oud is not really noticeable to me. Quite honestly, when I looked at the notes, I was a little bit surprised that there is oud in here because... I don't really get it. I mean, this is really rose, truffle, patchouli with a little bit of uh, vanilla added in. That's kind of what I get. Dark, deep, mysterious, slightly gothic type of scent, but really, really beautiful at the same time. Again, I think cold weather is perfect time for this fragrance. I am going to get a full bottle of this eventually. Next fragrance on my list comes from the House of Mugler, and it is, of course, Angel Muse. Now, mine is um, somewhere <laughs> in a box in my closet, and I forgot to pull it. Uh, my, my biggest gripe with most Mugler fragrances is that is how to store them and how to display them, because they don't stand. I have to lay them down. Who has space for that? So I, I started keeping them in a separate <laughs> box just because of that reason, and I forgot to pull it. But, you know, I'm going to put up a picture here. I'm sure you've seen this fragrance a million times. You've heard about it a million times, so I'm not going to spend too much time on it. But it's a gorgeous, gorgeous scent for the cold weather. My favorite from the house of Mugler, and I think it's more it's specifically the EDP that I would recommend for kind of late fall and early winter. Uh, of course, it has patchouli, you know, the, the trade note of all angels, and then it also has um, hazelnut, cocoa spread, uh, there is vetiver, there is pink pepper, whatever other notes, but really it's the hazelnut spread or Nutella spread, if you want, mixed with patchouli. And, uh, you know, even though patchouli is very strong, very evident, very prominent here, but somehow when it's mixed with this cocoa spread, it becomes, in my mind, so much more wearable than in the original uh, Angel. This one is just stunning. Uh, for cold weather, 
great affordable I, I would call it affordable scent to be honest because i think uh nowadays you can find it on discounter sites for very 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 low price so to me this is uh, an amazing beastly affordable scent for late fall and winter next on my list i have a fragrance from the house of imaginary authors and this is a whiff of a waffle cone this is mostly an ice cream uh, type of scent uh, but it's a very, very special ice cream. Um, I haven't tried that many fragrances from this house, but I have tried a few, and this is by far uh, my favorite, by far. I honestly like it so much more than, uh, what's the other one? Memoirs of a Trespasser, which is uh, probably their most um, famous offering and another kind of sweet um, vanilla type of scent. But for me, a whiff of a waffle cone works so much better. So this has ice cream. Like I said, there is an actual note of ice cream. There's also whipped cream. There is syrup, caramel, vanilla, cinnamon. I mean, it's just a mixture of all the amazing gourmand notes. But you know what I love about this scent is that surprisingly, given all of these sweet notes, this is not overly sweet. They really did something special with the scent. Ice cream can be a little bit too much, a little bit too sweet, a little bit cloying. Not this one, not at all. I mean, it's just done so beautifully. And it's because I'm definitely getting that waffle cone, that waffle cone being made right there. You're standing in this ice cream shop and there are all these varieties of ice cream and then they're making freshly uh, make freshly baked is that the right way to say it i don't know uh waffle cone so you're getting that kind of um, aromas from this waffle cone something you know um i don't want to say burned but some kind of aromas coming I, I don't know how to explain it coming from the waffle cone you know if you smell the freshly uh baked waffle cone i think you will understand what i mean and it's the mixture of, of that with all the sweet notes and the ice cream that really, I think, tones down the sweetness. And there's something really, really addictive and really special about this scent. I think um, the ice cream note is done beautifully here. So uh, this is really something that I'm planning to wear uh, during the cold months. Next fragrance is the one that I've spoken about very recently in uh, my favorite ampersands video, but I had to include it in here because I'm definitely planning to wear it uh, this winter. This is Amber Desire from Carolina Herrera. This is from her Confidentials line. Um, although this is not extremely strong or beastly. It is kind of an amber uh, on the lighter side of things. I really, really love it. I find something very cozy and very comforting about this scent. A uh, very elegant type of amber. I also think this is the type of scent that I can wear to the office. You know, if I go back to the office, which I think I am, at least part-time, uh, this is the type of scent that I can easily wear to the office because it's very elegant, very light type of scent, you know, and although most of the fragrances that I'm gravitating towards during colder months are kind of um, heavier, beastly type of fragrances, there is a place for something lighter and more elegant as well. And, and that's why I've chosen this one. So in this fragrance, we have cinnamon, black pepper, tuberose, geranium, sandalwood, patchouli, cedar. Well, okay. Not really getting, you know, any of these notes individually. To be honest, it's it's an amber scent. It's it's a smooth, uh, sweet, although not overly sweet, uh, very elegant type of amber with just a touch of cinnamon. Cinnamon is very very light, very mild in here, um, very much in moderation. Just beautiful scent. I mean, the, the kind of the color of the bottle, this kind of transparent ambery orange color i don't know it just works everything together works it's a perfect you know to me this bottle and the color just perfect representation of how the scent 
smells. So anyways, again, this is Amber Desire from Carolina Herrera. Next fragrance on my list is uh, the fragrance that I've spoken about um, at the end of the summer when I was testing a sample. And I still don't have a full bottle, although the more I test it, <laughs> the more I'm tempted to get a full bottle, especially now that it's cold outside. I am talking about material from Amouage. And this is my second sample that I'm testing now. I'm done with the first sample. I'm not really testing it at this point. You know, I, I know exactly what it smells like and how it behaves. It's more like I finished wearing it, the first sample, and I'm on to this one, which I have about half a vial of this. Um... You know, when I originally spoke about this, when I tested it in the summer, I said that it's a beautiful scent, but um, I don't find it terribly original. You know, it reminds me of other fragrances that I have tried. And I completely stand by that. It still reminds me uh, of other fragrances that I have tried, but I love it. I love the scent profile. It works amazingly in this colder weather. It's, it's a rare unwashed fragrance that I really, really love, probably because it was made by my favorite perfumer, Cecile Zarokian, and it definitely kind of um, has her style. Uh, it's similar to other things that she has done. So, so what is it similar to? Well, if you combine together Grand Soir from Maison Francis Corcajon with Café Cabanel from Tio Cabanel, that's kind of what I get in here. It has a similar amber to Grand Soir, you know, the type of amber that really warms up on the skin. The more you wear it, the more it mixes with your skin, the sweeter and smoother and deeper it becomes. And then you have um, kind of the spiciness and creaminess from Tio Cabanel added in here. So although some people call it a vanilla scent, to me, it is not a vanilla scent. Yes, vanilla is here, but it's definitely not the main player. To me, this is very much an amber scent. Um, gorgeous amber scent, just gorgeous. Smooth, sweet, creamy, um, spicy. It's kind of a... Um, amber with an edge, I would say. So again, I have been loving it, uh, wearing it, going through my samples, very, very tempted uh, to buy a full bottle. Just, uh, you know, really what's stopping me is the fact that it is similar to other things that I have. So uh, I'm not sure if I need this duplication in my collection, but like I said, I'm very tempted. Next fragrance is another amber scent, and um, I just realized that I think I have three embers in a row. Um, this is not, <laughs> not intentional. Uh, it just kind of happened that way. I have been uh, gravitating a lot towards amber scents uh, lately, and uh, you know, that's why you have three in a row in my selection. Again, I've spoken about this one recently, so I won't sp spend too much time on it. This is uh, absolutely amber from Fort and Manly. Um, this type of amber is a little bit different. This is amber mixed with honey. When you first smell it, when you first spray it, honey is so, so strong. This is all about honey. To me, honey is really uh, the main player. Amber is kind of a secondary in this composition. Um, there are also plums in here. So it does have not fresh plums, but I would say more like prunes added in. That's that's what I'm getting in here a little bit. Uh, there is ban benzoin, labdanum, there is musk, cedar, uh, there's rose in here, which I don't get at all. This is mostly honey, rich, uh, sweet honey, almost like uh, raw honey. This is not really processed honey. This is more like raw honey to me uh, with a little bit of a uh, Mm, dried plums, prunes, if you want, and with some amber um, mixed in. Such a beautiful, warm scent. Uh, beautiful for this cold weather. And again, I'm definitely planning to wear this one a ton. And I wanted to finish this video with a couple of, let's call them possibly outsiders, because these are floral fragrances. And you know, often florals are more 
uh, suitable for spring, summer. That's typically when we think about floral scents, but I think there's some florals out there that could work for fall and winter as well. And so I've chosen two such floral fragrances here. The first one is from Elisab Essence line, and this is number one, Rose. This is, of course, created by Francis Kirkajan. Uh, I think he really makes um, the best, <laughs> majority of the best rose fragrances, I think, are created by him. I feel like he's the rose master that's kind of, you know, very often when you have an amazing rose scent, it's created by him. At least that's my impression. And uh, this fragrance has uh, four different types of roses. That's what listed on the Fragrantica. I, you know, when I smell it, it smells a lot more complicated to me, a lot more complex than just four different types of rose. I don't know, but it's 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 a dark evening kind of rose. It's a little bit um, mysterious. This fragrance is kind of a boss lady type of scent. Uh, it is not uh, for warm weather. I think it will be overpowering. Uh, there's just... Um, too much strength and backbone in this fragrance, but for cold weather, it's a beautiful rose. So this is kind of a different type of rose for cold weather, because, you know, very often we think about, you know, either rose and oud combination or a really sweet jammy type of rose for, you know, fall and winter. And this one is neither one of those. It doesn't have oud. It's not very sweet. It in fact, it doesn't really have any sweetness. The sweetness is coming from rose in here, I think. Um, so it's it's not that sweet. It's not jammy. So it's a different type of rose that still, I think, works beautifully for cold weather. And the last fragrance in my lineup is, I think, even um, a bigger <laughs> outsider. This is White Mimosa from Salvador Ferragamo. This is, I think, his private collection. Not, not sure what it's called. Oh, it says on the bottle, Tuscan scent. There you go. Um, this is a scent that nobody talks about, but I think it is gorgeous. It is unique. It is interesting, and it is worth being mentioned. Well, as the name suggests, the scent is about Mimosa which is a flower that I really enjoy. Um, in addition to that, there is mandarin orange, there is heliotrope, there, is, there are white flowers, there is vanilla and iris. And it's really probably a mix of mimosa with a little bit of iris that I'm getting in here. It is powdery. It is a little bit sweet, although not overpowering. Um, there's definitely, I can tell that there is some vanilla added in because there is sweetness in here. What's interesting about this scent is that when I spray it on my skin, especially in an opening, I almost get a leathery touch. I don't know if Mimosa has the type of quality, if it ever comes off as leathery, or it's just some type of combination of these notes that creates that effect. But to me, it's like I'm getting slightly leathery flowers with a bit of vanilla. And so this makes this fragrance to me perfect perfect for kind of fall and winter because I feel like this is too thick for uh, warm weather. This really needs a bit of a cold wind around this fragrance. And it has, this fragrance um, is not the biggest projector, but it has a beautiful sillage. You know, when, when there is a wind blowing, I, I've tried it uh, kind of in this type of weather. It's beautiful. This sillage that it, that it leaves is gorgeous. It just, uh, you know, when, when I'm outside and there is wind outside, I just get these amazing whiffs of this fragrance that just uh, mesmerize me in a way. You know, I'm not a big floral person, but this one is so, so interesting. Like I said, overall, it's kind of um, slightly leathery, perhaps suede because it's not um, harsh leather at all because, you know, I don't do leather. So perhaps kind of very mild leather or even suede mixed with flowers, a little bit of powderiness, a little bit of sweetness. Really, really interesting fragrance. If you have a chance to try this one and you can find it because I know it's not easy to find this one, give it a try. So there you go. This is my lineup of 
my favorite fragrances or fragrances that I plan to wear during late uh, fall and winter. I would love to know what are your favorites for cold weather. Please let me know in the comments below. I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, please remember to give me a thumbs up and subscribe and I will see you soon in the next video. Bye!